We shall now see some questions from this section. Question number one. Recall that I stands for the set of irrational numbers. So I represents the set of irrational numbers. Part A. Show that if a comma b element of q, then a b and a plus b are elements of q as well. That means here you have to show that if a and b are two rational numbers, q stands for the set of rational numbers, then a plus b and a b are also elements of q. That means a plus b and a b are also rational numbers. Show that if a element of q and t element of i, that means a is a rational number and t is an irrational number, then a plus t element of i and a t element of i as long as a not equal to 0. So you have to show that a plus t is a irrational number and a t is an irrational number as long as a not equal to 0. Then part c says that part a can be summarized by saying that q is closed under addition and multiplication. Look at part a, show that if a comma b element of q then a b and a plus b are elements of q. So this thing if a and b are element are rational numbers then a b and a plus b are also rational numbers. So we say that q is closed under addition and multiplication. Why? Because a plus b is element of q and a b is an element of q. Now the question is is i closed under addition and multiplication? So you have to check this property for i. That means given to irrational numbers s and t, what can we say about s plus t and s t? So s and t are two irrational numbers. You got to check whether s plus t is irrational or rational. Similarly, s t is irrational or rational. So we will prove this one by one. The first one is if a and b are elements of q, then we have to show that a b and a plus b are elements of So let a and b be elements of q. Now, q, the set of uh, rational numbers is defined as q is equal to set of all p by q where p and q are elements of z, that means a set of integers and q not equal to 0. If a and b are elements of q, then a will be p by q where q not equal to 0, p and q are elements of z and b can be written as c by d where c and d are elements of z and d not equal to 0. First, we will check for a, b. Now a b is equal to a is p by q and b is c by d. So b by q into c by d you will get p c by q d. Now p and c are integers. So p multiplied by c p c is also an integer. Similarly q and d are integers with the property that q and d not equal to 0. So q d is also an integer which is not equal to 0. So here you got a b is equal to p c by q d where p c is an integer, q d is an also an integer but q d not equal to 0. So by the definition of q you can see that a b is an element of q. That means a b is a rational number. And now we will check for a plus b. Now a plus b is p by q plus c by d. When you cross multiply you will get p d plus q c by q d. Now as p q, c, d all are integers, p, d is an integer, q, c is also an integer, q, d is also an integer since q and d are not 0 then q, d will not be 0. Now p, d and q, c are integers so p, d plus q, c will be uh, will also be an integer. So this is an integer by a non-zero integer, p, d plus q, c is an integer and q, d is an integer which is not equal to 0. So by the definition of q you can see that a plus b is an element of q. So we have shown that if a and b are uh, any two rational numbers or elements of q, we have shown that a, b and a plus b are elements of q. Part b is show that if a is an element of q and t is an element of i, then we have to show that a plus t is an element of i and a t is an element of i where a is not equal to 0. Here given that a is a rational number and t is an irrational number. So we have to show that a plus t is an element of i that means a plus t is an irrational number also a t is an irrational number. First we will show that a plus t is an irrational number that means a plus t element of i. For this we use the method of contradiction. We will suppose, suppose that a plus t is not an element of i. Not an element of i means it is not a irrational number. It is not a irrational number means it is a rational number that means a plus t is an element of q. Now 
Since a plus t is a rational number and a is a rational number, then a plus t plus minus a. a plus t is a rational number. Minus a is also a rational number. So a plus t plus minus a is a rational number by part 1. So this is an element of but we know that a plus t plus minus a is uh, a and minus a deletes to give you t. So you'll get t is an element of q. That means t is a rational number. But we have assumed that t is an irrational number. So this is a contradiction. So this contradiction implies that our assumption is wrong. What was our assumption? Our assumption was a plus t is an element of q. So this will not happen. So a plus t is an element of i. Now we will show that a t element of i. We will use the same technique. We will assume that a t is not element of i. That means a t element of q. a t element of q means a t is a rational number. Now you have a is an element of q. That means a is a rational number. So if a is a non-zero rational number, if a is not equal to 0, then 1 by a is also a rational number. Now if we multiply both this, a t and uh, 1 by a, this is a product of two rational numbers and by part a, this should be a rational number. Now a t multiplied with uh, 1 by a, this is not 1 by t, this is 1 by a, a t multiplied with 1 by a, you will get t. So t is an element of q that means t is a rational number and this is a contradiction to the fact that t is a irrational number. So our assumption that uh, a t is a rational number is wrong so a t is a irrational number and this proves part b. Now part c we have to check whether the set i of irrational numbers is closed under addition and multiplication. That means if s and t are two irrational numbers, we have to check whether s plus t is irrational and st is rational. Now we will claim that both of them are not irrational. s plus t and st are not irrational so that the set i is not closed under addition or multiplication. We will justify our argument. We are given that s and t are two irrational numbers. Now we are saying that s plus t can be either irrational or rational. We will give examples for this. If I take uh, s is equal to root 2 and t is equal to minus root, then s plus t will be root 2 plus minus root 2 which is 0 which is a rational number. Now if I take s as a root 2 and t as 2 root 2, so s plus t will be root 2 plus 2 root 2 which is 3 root 2 and we know that 3 root 2 is an irrational number. So in the first case, we got s plus t is a rational number and now in this case, we got a s plus t is an irrational number. So we can not generalize that s plus t will be always irrational or s plus t will be always rational. So s plus t will be sometimes rational or sometimes irrational depending on the values of s and t. Now we will check the same for st. So we are saying that st can be either irrational or rational. Take s is equal to root 2 and t is equal to minus root 2 then st will be root 2 into minus root 2 which is minus 2 and this minus 2 is a rational number. Now we will take again s is equal to root 2 and t is equal to root 3 so that st is equal to root 2 into root 3 and we know that this is root 6 and root 6 is an rational number. So sometimes st is rational number and sometimes st is irrational number so we cannot generalize to say that st is always rational or st is always irrational. So to conclude we cannot say that the set i of irrational numbers is closed under addition and multiplication or we can say that the set i of irrational numbers is not closed under addition and multiplication. We have our next question from the section 1.4. Prove that Intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity, open interval 0, 1 by n equal to 5. That means we have to prove that this infinite intersection of open intervals 0, 1 by n is empty. Now if you look at the open intervals involved here, if you put n is equal to 1, you will get 0, 1, open interval 0, 1. If you put n is equal to 2, you will get open interval 0, 1 by 2. If you put n is equal to 3, you will get open interval 0, 1 by 3. If you put n is equal to 4, you will get open interval 0, 1 by 4 and so on. So here you can see that 
the first interval 0 1 contains the second interval 0 1 by 2 which again contains the third interval 0 1 by 3 which again contains the fourth interval open interval 0 1 by 4 etc so these are a sequence of nested intervals here we have to show that the intersection of these nested intervals infinite intersection of these nested intervals is empty we have seen a similar result in the nested interval property the difference was that there the intervals involved was closed intervals so the nested interval property holds only when the intervals involved are closed intervals so we have to show that this infinite intersection of open intervals intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity open interval 0 1 by n is empty for that let x be any real number or x be an arbitrary real number now to show that this infinite intersection is empty it is enough to show that this x is not an element of one of the intervals in this collection so even if x is not an element of any of the intervals in this collection x will not be an element of this infinite intersection so first we will assume that x is less than or equal to 0 so if x is less than or equal to 0 then if we take n is equal to 1 the interval which we get is 0 1 and as x is less than or equal to 0 x will not be an element of 0 1 now assume that x greater than 0 if x is greater than 0 then the then by the archimedean property we will get a natural number n such that 1 by n is less than x now we fix this n as n naught so we will get 1 by n naught is less than x so if 1 by n naught is less than x this implies that x is not an element of the open interval 0 1 by n naught so if x is not an element of the interval open interval 0 1 by n naught then x will not be an element of this infinite collection as x was an arbitrary real number or arbitrary element of r we can say that no such x exists which will belong to this collection so this means that intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity 0 1 by n will be empty and this completes our proof here we have our next question use the archimedean property of r r is a set of real numbers to rigorously prove that infimum of set of all 1 by n where n element of n is 0 so we have to show that the infimum of this set set of all n says that n element of capital n is 0 so for proving this first we name this set as a so let a is equal to set of all 1 by n such that n element of now if you look at the elements of the set a it is of the form 1 by n where n is a natural number so all the elements of this set 1 by n will be greater than 0 or we can say that 0 less than 1 by n for all n element of n so this implies that 0 is a lower bound for the set a now we have to show that 0 is the infimum so infimum means greatest lower bound to show that 0 is the greatest lower bound we have to show that if c is any other lower bound of the set a then c is less than or equal to 0 now if c is greater than 0 then by the archimedean property of r there exists a natural number n such that 1 by n is less than c now 1 by n less than c this implies that c is not the lower bound of this set so if c greater than 0 then c cannot be a lower bound of this set so any c greater than 0 is not a lower bound of a so if c is to be a lower bound of a it should satisfy the condition c less than or equal to 0 now c less than or equal to 0 implies that 0 is the greatest lower bound of the set a that means 0 is the infimum of the set a so that is we'll get infimum of a is equal to 0 as required so this completes our proof